tight an attachment. I saw him on the backhoe a few months ago. And there's a couple of things that I would have liked to know or before I started. Um, so if you're looking at installing a thumb or if you're looking at the tighten attachment thumb, this is what it looks like when it's installed. It's not obvious about how to uh, put this on because there's zero directions. Um, so here's some tips and some things to think about when you put this on. One, they say measure the length from here. Uh, actually, they say measure the length from here out to here. And so mine was 36 inches, so I got the 36 inch thumb. And as you can see here, you can only move this down to a certain you know place because there's like weld here and then there's nothing past here uh, to weld onto. So I put mine back here, but if you look, because of the offset between, between here and here, there's like a foot gap here. It's not really a problem because generally when you're trying to grab something, you know, it's gonna have, take up some space. But uh, when you're placing this thing, you're really gonna wanna push it as far down to this uh, weld as possible. Now this is an extend hoe which is super important because uh, the non extend hoes I believe, generally have a ductile iron and require special welding techniques and materials and stuff like that. Uh, so this is an extend hoe and this is just regular uh, mild steel that was welded. You can see it's already welded on this seam here. It's welded on the bottom. So I didn't really feel bad about welding onto this at all. So this thing, it's not obvious what this thing does, but this is a, re a retainer so that this, uh, this part here, this intermediary part, can have a place to live. And it doesn't tell you how to, where to put this. So you think you just put it in a, you know, put it so that you can lock it in here. But I found that there's a design feature here that's not obvious, is that there's two holes on this side, but they don't tell you why there's two holes. And I think, I know why there's two holes, and the answer is when you're locked, you'll use one hole, and when you're using it, you use the second hole. So this is actually all the way forward now, and there's only many different levels of uh, uh, going back here. And you gotta be super careful to make sure that this doesn't hit this because it's a lot closer than you know than the bucket is, and it moves at obviously a different rate. So, um, oh yeah, the first thing I guess I should say about this is that you know this is, I think, half inch. I think it's like half inch steel. It's very, uh, it's very robust, but it's also very heavy. So you gotta be careful to make sure when you're pulling these pins out and stuff that you don't have. I don't know, a limb between here and here because it'll break it right in half, I can pretty much guarantee. Alright, so this is what I think is like the first part. Obviously, you could take this thing out and kind of move it independently. And even moving with this, it just makes it heavier. So that's uh, a trade off, I guess. But once this guy is locked in like this, uh, if I pull this second pin and push it up the rest of the way without having to deal with this thing coming loose on you. back in there you go that's a retracted position so the takeaway here is uh, when you're placing this thing uh, make sure that it's in line because there's very little uh, there's very little of a gap between where this thing will wants to land and where this thing has to go so when you're putting this whole thing together absolutely tack it into place and make sure this guy's gonna fold and it's gonna slide in between these two uh, plates because there's less than an eighth of an inch between the two. So it has to be like nearly perfectly lined up. But yeah, so when you place this, the distance between this pin and this pin is the, the same distance on this middle, this middle uh, strengthener back brace from the end hole to the inner hole. And I think that's the way it wasn't supposed to be installed.